watch OS tutorial with Swift UI, we're going to learn how to save and load data on Apple Watch. Let's see how it works in action before we start coding. First, I will create some content using one of the Apple Watch input interfaces. Let's develop an application for Apple Watch. After creating this content, I'm going to save it on the Apple Watch's local storage by tapping on the big plus button. As you can see, a new note has replaced the icon on the previously empty home page. Now let's repeat the process again. Swift UI is awesome. And there it goes. Please notice that the list with the notes is totally different than we used to it on iOS and iPadOS. Now I will delete one of the notes and show you how it works as well. By the end of this lecture, the starter page will be fully functional and finished. Super! Without further ado, let's launch Xcode and start coding along with me. Local storage. Since we will not use core data or other web services to store data in a persistent online database, therefore we need to store it locally as a data file. Fortunately, it doesn't make it hard to do it at all with the use of the codable protocol. But before we start encoding and decoding each new note, first, we need to know where to save the data file on Apple Watch. When you develop apps for Apple Watch, then you should keep in mind that WatchOS runs in a so-called sandbox, which is basically a protected file system that prevents us from simply navigating to specific files. Instead, we must run some specific code to ask for the targeted app's documents directory. It is a unique directory allocated for each watch app, and this is where we can write and read data files directly. All that said, please add this new method to the function section. Start coding. Func. Get document directory. Return. URL. Let. Path. Equals. File manager. Dot. Default. Dot. URLs. For. Document directory. In. User domain mask. Return. Path. Zero index. This get document directory method returns an URL type which is used to store not only any kind of external web URLs but also locations for local files stored directly on Apple Watch. Encoding data. Now, after we know where to write the notes data file, we can go back to editing the previously created save function. First, please comment out the dump method. Second, we will create a new do catch statement so that we can run our code safely inside it later on. Enter the following code. Do. Catch. Print. Saving data has failed. Nice. Now let's write down all steps that it takes to save data, shall we? The first step is to convert the notes array to data using JSON encoder. The second step is to create a new URL to save the file using the get document directory method. And finally, the last step is to write the data to the given URL. Now since you can understand what steps our algorithm should take, therefore we can make it happen with ease. Enter the following code. Let data equals Try JSON encoder dot encode notes. Then this will be the second step. Let URL equals get document directory dot appending path component notes. Great. After that, we can try to write the notes data with this code. Try data dot write to URL. And that is how to write data on Apple Watch. It's not that hard at all if you know the whole process. 
Similarly, loading data back from the local storage is more or less the same work, just in a different order. Decoding data. First, we need to create a new function with proper error handling that we call later on. Enter the following code. Func. Load. Do. Catch. New comment. Do nothing. Notice that our catch block does do nothing because it's not a problem if there is no data file found on the watch. It could happen when the users start the watch app for the first time or when all notes were deleted from the array. Both scenarios are totally valid in this case. Next. It's always a good practice laying down in plain English the necessary steps that our code should take in the do block of code. Apparently, these are the following actions. First. Get the notes URL path. Second. Create a new property for the data. And the third action is to decode the data and assign its value to this property. C. There is nothing complicated there. So, let's translate these actions to Swift. Enter. Let. URL. Equals. Get document directory. Dot. Appending path component. Notes. After that, let's continue with the second action. Enter. Let. Data. Equals. Try. Data. Contents of URL. Now, let's finish up with entering the last action. Notes. Equals. Try. JSON decoder. Dot. Decode. Type of an array of note. Dot. Self. From. Data. All right. Since we've just created a new load function, then it's time to call it each time when the content view appears on the Apple Watch. But before doing that, I must tell you something about the nature how this code works. Just think about it for a sec. If we call this function immediately using the on appear view modifier, then SwiftUI will get confused because it's changing the program state immediately, and it could crash the application. To avoid it from happening, we need to add some delay before we load the notes from the local storage. This time interval could be such as short, like a few milliseconds, so that users couldn't notice it at all, and our code will run without crashing itself eventually. Does it sound great? Then let's make it happen by wrapping our code into a new method called dispatch queue. First of all, select all code inside the load function. Then cut this code into the clipboard as I show you. After that, enter this specific code. Dispatch queue. Dot. Main. Dot. Async. Finally, paste the code from the clipboard inside the new dispatch queue method, which is part of an Apple framework called Grand Central Dispatch. To keep this tutorial short, you can get more details about this old framework using the official Apple documentation. This method tells watchOS to run the actions at the next possible opportunity that isn't right now. In a nutshell, we will run these actions and change the program's state with a millisecond delay to not crash the notes app. Finally, we can call this load function with a new on appear modifier, so let's do it right now. Please scroll down to the end of the main vStack and add this code to it. On appear. Perform. Load. There is nothing more satisfying in app development than we can see our app in work. That's being said, let's build and run the project. Testing. First, let's create some content using one of the input interfaces, shall we? Let's develop a new application. After that, tap on the plus button and see what's happening. As you noticed, the count number has been increased by one. So far, it's the same as when we started this Swift UI tutorial. To ensure that we save this note to the local storage successfully, we need to close the watch app and reopen it. So let's do it.
By tapping on the side button of the watch, the app switcher will appear on the screen. Here, we can close the app completely by swiping our finger to the left, then tapping on the big red X mark as I show you. It makes sure that the Notes app is not running in the background. Now, let's reopen it from the watch home screen, shall we? There it goes. The Notes counter still shows that we have one note, so our code works without any problem. That said, in the second half of this tutorial, our goal is to create a new list on this page and populate it with all notes from the local data file. List. Jump back to Xcode and replace the text view with a new list component as I show you. Enter. List. End of the list. Four. Each. Zero. Dot. Dot. Less than. Notes. Dot. Count. ID backslash dot self I in the letter I in this loop is a shorthand of the index world. We can use any word for that, but it is commonly used practice in computer science. Next. Now, we need to create some new views for the content. Enter the following code. H stack. New comment. End of the H stack. Capsule. Frame. Width. 4. Foreground color. Accent color. Text. Notes. Open square bracket. Index. Closed square bracket. Dot. Text. Line limit. 1. Padding. Leading. 5. After that, let's build and run the project, shall we? If everything goes well, then we should see a note in the list. And? There it goes. Nice job. Now, let's add a new note to this list. Swift UI is awesome. Of course, we need to tap the yellow plus button to save it first. Super. A new note was added to the list immediately. Let's try it out again. Let's learn watchOS development. Now, if we close the note application and reopen it again, then we should see the previously created notes in this list on the home page. It works without any glitches. How fantastic is that? Deleting notes. All right, this notes app gets better and better. Now the next useful feature that we will develop is the note deleting functionality. Jump back to Xcode and let's create a new function for this feature. Enter the following code. Func. Delete. Offsets. Index. Set. With animation. Notes dot remove at offsets offsets save as you can see we must use the index set and the offsets to delete any specific note from the notes array besides that to make it happen we also need to add a new modifier to the for each loop so let's do it scroll down to the end of the for each loop then add this code to it new comment end of the loop on delete. Perform. Delete. And that's it. We can test this new feature either in the simulator or on a real Apple Watch. Testing. After the launch of the Notes app, please select one of the notes from the list and swipe to the right to make the delete button visible. Now if we tap on the big red button, then we can see how the selected note item got deleted from the list. But not only that, as soon as we delete one of the notes from the array, the application saves and updates the data on the local storage as well. It works like a charm. We could call it a day, but there is one more thing that we can develop to improve the overall user experience. Empty state. 
Right now, we can see a big empty space below the header section when there aren't notes in the list. Wouldn't it be better if we could differentiate this empty state somehow? Of course, we can do it by displaying two different views conditionally. To make it happen, please wrap the list view into a new conditional statement as I show you. Our goal is to make the notes list view visible only if there is at least one note item in the notes array. Add this code to the if section. If notes dot count equals or more than one. After that, jump to the else section and replace the empty view with this code. Spacer image system name note dot text spacer. As you can see in the preview, we have just added an image to the page when we don't have any notes. However, we need to work on it a little bit to make it look better. Let's add the following modifiers to this image, shall we? Image. Resizable. Scale to fit. Foreground color. Gray. Opacity. 0. Point. 25. And finally, padding. 25. There it goes. With this minor enhancement, our notes application is much better now. Do you agree with me? I hope so. Final test. Now, the only thing that we need to do is to test how these conditional views work in action. Please, build and run the app. After the app launch, we need to delete all notes from the list to see what happens. Awesome. It works without any glitches. But not only that, the overall design and user experience got better as well. I really hope that you like how we build up from scratch this Apple Watch app. In the following lecture, we will create a new detailed view for each individual note. Until then, happy coding.